Can Nightcrawler nurse the hangover of his life while also hunting a psychic parasite that is holding Krakoa in the grips of terror? Well, let's hop into the pages of Way of Axe issue number three and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the comic, we are once again back at the Hellfire Gala. Don't worry, we don't spend much time here retreading old ground, but if you keep an eagle eye open, you'll find Paul Shear and Jason Manzoukas. I know I did, and it made me very happy. As you'll know, if you read the two previous issues, Nightcrawler is dealing with a lot of pressure right now. Onslaught has returned and is targeting young, impressionable mutants at their weakest points. And if that's not enough, the Quiet Council still expects him to put together some sort of grand, unifying mutant relationship religion that will unite the whole island, and Kirk's not dealing with it well. Basically, he's dealing with it by drinking himself into oblivion and proselytizing to anyone who will listen to him. It's in his drunken ramblings, though, Nightcrawler does perhaps hit on an interesting idea, and that is all the old world face simply just won't do for the brand new mutant nation, but maybe they can all gather together around the three very simple laws of Krakoa. The first law actually being pitched by Nightcrawler himself, and that is multiply and make more mutants. Yeah, that sounds easy enough, right? Who doesn't love multiplying? Also, hey, well, it has nothing to do with the story. I appreciate when we see drunken, passed-out Nightcrawler at the end of the party after everyone has already left. Magneto is sharing a dance with his daughter, Scarlet Witch, who has somehow managed to sneak back on the island when no one was looking. So yeah, epically hungover Nightcrawler figures that making more mutants will be the order of the day, and in fact, sex, sexuality, and intimacy are ultimately going to be the overarching theme of this whole story. For as Dr. Nemesis says to Nightcrawler, if this was just a quantity thing that the Quiet Council and Krakoa wanted to get done, then they would just okay a lot of test tube babies, but they fear the whole eugenic slippery slope. Meaning that if they want more little babby X-Man juniors, they're gonna have to do so the old-fashioned way by knocking boots. Only, here's the thing though, as I'm sure you've already noticed, mutants are not a monolith. There are so many different types of mutants with so many amazing different types of powers, it's not always safe for them to get intimate, let alone procreate. In fact, Legion gets himself a rather interesting B story this issue when Pixie asks him to assist in two young mutants who tried to get comfortable with each other, only for one's ability to shred everything they touch to, well, flare up and kind of take all the sensualness out of the evening. Luckily, Legion is a master of the mental arts, and that extends to sex and intimacy as well. He's gonna do a good old-fashioned mutant mind meld on the two so they can get all the date stuff out of the way and just really get to know each other and connect like never before on a whole other plane of existence. This ends up backfiring in a big bad way almost instantly. Oh sure, this sort of mind-melding thing works for super psychics like Legion, but for regular old people? It proves to be too much too fast laying yourself that bare to a stranger. It only leads to animosity and anger, more negative emotions that end up feeding, you guessed it, that weird ghost of Onslaught that's running around. Legion might not have succeeded in catching Onslaught this time, but he has proven a theory about what exactly can bring the nasty red giant out. And back over with Nightcrawler, he attempts to observe some young mutant couples and how exactly they're getting on right now. Nemesis is salty and fun as ever, saying that most of the major AAA mutants already left to go colonize Mars, and why does it always feel like they're doing stuff without telling us? Eventually, Nightcrawler ends up coming face to face with a mysterious cloaked woman who's handing out prophylactics and other forms of birth control. Turns out it's Stacy X, everyone. Remember her? One-time Vegas escort with the power to manipulate people via pheromones. And not that long ago, actually a personal friend to Nightcrawler himself. At first, Kirk is kind of pissed off at her, what with handing out protection. Isn't that going against the first Krakoan law? Though as Stacy quickly makes it clear, Nightcrawler and the Quiet Council have all of this backwards and completely wrong. She's been using her time on the island to create a safe space for young couples to be intimate with one another. Yeah, sometimes it's sex, but mostly it's about intimacy, touch, communication, all the things that even X-Men need. But that's not all Stacy X is doing either either. She's also running Krakoa's very first orphanage nursery. Yeah, go figure. You get a bunch of young demigods with superpowers on an island, dress them exclusively in spandex fetish gear, tell them to make more mutants, and then you're shocked and surprised that they end up having a bunch of unwanted pregnancies. 
The Quiet Council could care less about all of these children and what's become of them because, well, they're too busy colonizing other planets and selling drugs, don't you know? It's made abundantly clear that everything Nightcrawler thought he believed has once again been proved to be pretty wrong. In fact, we even see the strange woman from the previous issue, Lost, has actually taken up a job at the nursery helping children, her strange gravity-based powers not actually affecting them. Now, this Garden of Earthly Delight serves a very positive purpose on Krakow but not everyone is so welcome, like Fabian Cortez, who still can't get over Magneto and his weird obsession with him. In fact, now that you mention it, Law seems to actually recognize Cortez and the word Acolytes, and the two end up having a little bit of a scuffle that once again summons in the spirit of Onslaught. Luckily, Legion, Pixie, and the Zorn brothers are able to swoop on in and save this place that Stacy X has built and all the people in there. We also discover that Nightcrawler and his team are actively going out of their way to try and keep this Onslaught stuff hush-hush. After all, Onslaught is the combined psychic energy of two of Krakoa's biggest founding fathers, Xavier and Magneto. And they can't exactly be 100% sure right now if Onslaught is influencing them or vice versa. Nightcrawler and his team return to Blob's Tiki Bar later that night, their heads held low, feeling that they're nowhere closer to fixing all of Krakoa's ills like they had promised. But it's actually Stacy X who ends up stepping on in with some words of encouragement, saying that maybe Krakoa and mutant kind don't need laws or religion so much as they need, well, more people like Nightcrawler who are willing to help. And that perhaps everyone would be better suited just taking a couple steps outside their comfort zone every so often. Dr. Nemesis actually ends up taking this to heart and asking Dazzler to a dance, despite the fact that they've been at each other's throats for the first two issues. And so that was Way of X issue number three, everybody, and once again, Cy Spurrier manages to turn in one powerhouse of a story. I am genuinely in awe at this book's ability to tackle some very complicated subject matter. I assumed that they would only be dealing with religion and theology and faith, but yet here we go, a whole issue about sex, sexuality, intimacy, connections... All stuff that superhero comics genuinely have a hard time tackling if they even choose to tackle it at all, many superhero books feeling really sexless. That's all amazing on its own, and then you tie it in this bigger bow that involves everything going on with Onslaught, the Hellfire Gala, and it's all just weaved so seamlessly. If the book can continue to be this quietly revolutionary, then I think we got ourselves an all-time classic on our hands here, which is saying something considering how strong all the other X-Men offerings are. In fact, Another reason why this series works so well, too, is that characters like Nightcrawler and Legion are probably the loudest in criticizing the darker aspects of Krakoan society, and the book shows us all the ways in that the Quiet Council is actually failing their people by expanding their empire further and further. It would also be very easy for a story like this to be told in a dark, dour, depressing way, yet surprisingly they manage to do the ultimate hat trick and have the end of this story ultimately be positive and uplifting with a good human message for everyone. The more I think about it, the more I end up positively loving this issue. I would give this one a very much deserved 10 out of 10. If you are not reading Way of X right now, you are positively doing yourself a disservice. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time, Bye bye